Hi everyone. Well, today we're going to do a really nice little painting, which is a beach scene. It takes a bit longer than the ones we have done to date, but that's the pretty picture that we're going to do. You'll see online the equipment you need, the side of the canvas and the paint. And once you've got all that assembled, let's just get going. Right, let's get started. What we're going to do is mix a lovely pale blue for the sky. So I'm going to wet my brush. My paints might be a little bit wetter or more liquid than yours. So if you have thicker paint, you probably don't need to do this. I've put some water on my brush, dried it off. I'm going to mix a nice light blue for the sky. So here we go. That's my color for the sky. See that beautiful nice blue there? Right for that. My sky is going to be approximately that far down. So if you're looking at halfway, it's about a quarter of the way down, just over a quarter of the way down. I'm going to paint all the rest of the canvas to the top with that lovely light blue. Now I'm tending to mix my colours on the canvas to give myself a variation in the sky colour because I find that if you have a variation in the sky colour, nature isn't flat. Nature's got a lot of different aspects to it, sky included, which is why I've got this beautiful blend going on in the sky. If I wanted to, if you want to, you can add in some clouds. I'm not even going to wash that brush off. I'm just going to load that brush with white and add some clouds. I have a variation in there. For my clouds, I'm going to put some paint on with this round motion. See? Clouds are also very different in the sky. So I'm going to they're not little blobs. They crisscross each other, the way they're windblown, they have wisps coming off them. But what I do find is they tend to be lighter across the top because of the sun shining on the top and a little bit darker across the bottom. So to add some interest to my sky today, I'm probably going to add a little tiny bit of black into that pale blue. Maybe that's a bit much. So you can see, a very, very small amount of the darker paint changes your color dramatically. So only use a very small amount and add in your other colors until you're happy with the blend. That's kind of the right tonal value. Just with this dark color, it's going to add some drama to the bottom of my cloud. So I'm going to put a little bit of that drama into the cloud. Grey across the bottom of the cloud there and grey across the bottom of my cloud there. I'm going to wash that brush off and I have a dry brush here that I'm going to take and blend the bottom of my cloud into the sky with that blending motion. It's a dry brush. So I'll blend that into the blue of the sky underneath. So I still have some nice highlight across the top. Can you see that? I've got some nice highlight across the top of the cloud. In fact, there's quite a bit of paint on there. Can blend that into there. Back into there. And some of the dark drama underneath the cloud there. Perhaps a little bit more. Let me take my other brush, dry that off, and put a bit more grey back into that cloud there. Bit of grey down there. There we go. Interesting clouds. Right, once I'm happy with my clouds, I'm going to 
put some C in. So I'm going to wash that big brush off, clean it, dry it. Now my C, starting with blue, plain blue. Let's see what that looks like. And my plain blue is going to go right underneath that horizon line, straight as you can make it. Like that. And it's the width of my brush, a little bit more than the width of my brush. I'm going to paint down a little bit like that. Let's try and make that as straight as I can do. If it's not straight, it doesn't matter. This is all, when it's done visually, it's going to look straight. No painting is ever viewed from right up close. So don't be too particular about it. I'm going to now add some green to the blue to make myself a very nice dark turquoise color. Like that. And with that dark turquoise color, I'm going to blend that down to blend this color. I have to go over the blue first, like that. Put the turquoise color on top of the blue, blend it up. Wash my brush off, dry it, load some more turquoise on and put that underneath. Let's mix more turquoise. underneath like that. So you can see my C is getting lighter as I go out and to blend it because my paint is still a bit wet I'm just going to go over it to get a nice blend. From about that far down I now want to make it even a bit lighter so I'm going to add a bit of white to my turquoise mix like that. Got quite a nice turquoise colour, a little bit dark there, maybe a little bit more green I'm going to add to it and now I'm going to put that underneath. So I've covered about two-thirds of the canvas at this stage and to blend it I'm just going to make my nice long horizontal sweeps of the brush across. You can see I have a very nice looking blend there. With acrylics it's always difficult to get a blend so practice that. Practice going over the edge of the colour. Don't go to the edge of the colour, go over the edge of the colour and then blend up and down until you have a colour that you, a colour blend that you like. Right I'm going to wash that brush off, dry it and now I want a little bit lower I want more green in my C. So I'm going to take a bit of green, put it in my mixing section here, and get a beautiful light color green like that. That's for my frothy foam in the front. That's as my C hits the sand, is going to be that beautiful light green color. Add a little bit more white to it. There we go. And that's my C color going across. So I've got about a quarter of the canvas left here that I'm going to put sand into. Blending down a little bit more, I'm going to wash that brush off, put plain white, load white onto the brush only, and that I'm going to put across the bottom of the canvas, all the way down to the bottom like that. My beach. My beach is actually made up of a mix, a very pale mix of yellow, red and white. So I'm going to take a bit of the red, mix it into the yellow palette section, tiny bit of the red, and you can see that changes my yellow quite dramatically. I'm now going to take a touch of the white that I've got in the corner here blend this into my beach colour. Touch of black. So what I've done here is I've put a touch of red, a touch of yellow and a touch of black. I'm going to need more white 
I don't have any more white here, so let me put some more white onto my palette on the side here. Add a bit more white. And take that white. And mix it into my beach color. So I'm getting much more. You can see how the darker colors are very dramatic. To make them lighter, you just have to keep on adding more and more white. So be very gentle when you add your darker colors into your lighter colors. And do it slowly because then you have more control. Right, that's kind of the beach color that I want. So I'm going to use that beach color. And I want my beach to be down this section. This is probably a little bit more yellow than I'm actually going to want it. So I'm going to just add a touch of black in there. Very small bit of black in there to my palette. Don't want it so yellow. And funnily enough, adding black makes it a little bit more like a yellow ochre. More of us, that's more like the color than I want. Don't want it too yellow. So that's my sand. I want my waves now to mix in with the sand. So to do that, I'm going to have to take my palette, take my sand color, a little bit of that sand color, put that there, add a touch of green, add a touch of white. So what I'm doing is I've got that light color green and white that I've used here for the foam and I've mixed it into the sand. Add a little bit more white. Okay. And for that, I'm going to now put in a wave. This is the water on top of the sand. That's why I've blended it that way. So I'm going to put in my wave like that in that area there. Right across there. So now my water, if you look at that, can you see that? My water's just got a slight green tinge on top of the sand. If it's not as dramatic a change as you want, add a bit of white. Dry your paintbrush off, add a bit of white, and put that into that area there. It'll still just blend in your sand a little. It's going to be my wave. That's the area that the wave covers. Okay. So, wash that brush off. I'm going to leave that on the side there because I'm not going to be using that brush anymore. The big brush. I'm now going to retire that brush. Brush care is very important. So do dry your brush off. Wash it very carefully. Make sure there's no color in it. Dry it off on your paper. Pull all the bristles in and put it to the side. Store it. When you store your brushes, store them up ways so that the bristles don't get bent. That brush is going to be stored now. I don't need that anymore. While my paint is still a little wet, I need to know where my pole is going to go. So I'm going to mark it here. A light line all the way down and into the beach. That's where my pole will eventually go. I don't know if you can see that, but from close, you can see there's just a look of where the pole is going to go. Right. Gives me an idea of where to paint my signposts. I want my first signpost to be here, up in the sky area. So now this depends on how many signs you want on here. You might only want one or two signs. I want four signs going down. I'm going to use 
one sign on this post that goes in this direction. For that, I want to paint a rectangle in that beach color. And my rectangle, once I've painted the rectangle with this round brush, is going to point to the right hand side of the canvas, like that. Make it a little clearer. That's my first beach sign. It'll all come together just now once we put some highlights and low lights and shadows on there. My next one, I'm going to want that to go in this direction to the left of my canvas. So I'm going to paint a rectangle that goes down to the left. If your paint is still a little wet, all you have to do is wait for it to dry. And then you can paint over it. And you can see my canvas is still a little wet here. So I'm going to wait for a little bit until it's dried. Right, when your paint's a little drier, you can now put the detail of this sign on top of your C. So I'm making a nice rectangle, like so. My sign, this, this sign is going to point off to the left, so there. The paint's still a little wet, so I will wait for that to dry a bit before I finish off that sign post, which means I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. And as it is, with the paint mixing, you can see that I've got some detail might look like wood at the end of the day. I will lighten that up. My next sign, I would like it to be in round about here. So I'm going to put a sign and it's also going off to the right. So I'll put a little rectangle here and paint an arrow onto that rectangle. So that sign's going to be painting, pointing that way. And the last sign, I've got four, four signs. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to use this painting in my hallway. And I'm going to put directions on for my children to follow. One of the things that my kids do is they never pick up towels. So I would like them to know where the towels get hung. I think it's something that every parent would like their children to know. Still not dry enough. I'm going to add a little bit of white detail to these signs. And to make them look more like wood, Oh, this one's going to be pointing off to the left, I think. There we go. To make them look a little bit more like wood, you use a mixture of white. So I've loaded white on this brush. I haven't bothered to wash it off. And I'm going to put a few little highlights of white onto each of these wooden panels. And then as a little bit of a contrast, I have been using this beach color that I made down here. I'm going to add a touch more black to that, touch more orange, and I've got a fairly nice olivey brown. And for that olivey brown color, I'm going to use that to put a few little dark lights into my wood signs. 
you add a little bit more red, it becomes even a darker brown. Don't want it too dark because I'm going to be putting some text on there just now. I'm going to write some signs on there. There we go. Now I need to make a decent brown for the pole. So for that, I'm still using my round brush. I haven't even bothered to wash it off because we are using a form of brown. I'm going to now take a little bit of the yellow, put it here because I'm using this for my beach still. So I'm going to take a little bit of the yellow, add a little bit of the red. So I've got a fairly dark orange there and add a touch of black to that. So that mix of the yellow, orange and black gives you a decent brown. Add a bit more red to it and you've got a rich brown. That rich brown, experiment with your reds and yellows, add your black very slowly and then you'll find how to control your colours until you can get to a decent brown. I'm going to paint my post now. My post, I've given myself a line, so I know where my post is going to go. So my post is going to go into the sand across the bottom here, and I'm going to make it the thickness, the width of this round brush. I'm going to paint my post up to the edge of my sign there. As it's the width of my brush, I'm going to put the extension of the post in between each of these signs now. If you do go over your signs, not a problem. You can always tidy that up at a later stage with the smaller brush. I know my post is going to go into this area here and into this area here. The width of my brush don't go any thicker than that. My post doesn't get thicker as we paint further up. And in fact, if you do make it a little bit thicker, just remember you want to make it thicker all the way down as well. I'm going to paint a little bit up here too. Not high into the sky, it's going to be there. So I've painted in the majority of my post. Now I'm just going to make sure I get the edges nice and neat around that post. Like that. You can change to the thinner brush at this stage because it gives you a bit more control. I just like using this brush because the thickness of this brush gives me my pole. And no piece of wood is ever a hundred percent straight unless it's been, especially a poles, unless it's been cut specifically. But this is a pole. So it's going to have funny little knobs and interesting pieces or interesting looking sides. So there we go. Make that a little bit thicker down here. And that goes into the sand across the bottom here. Here's my post. Right, now to finish off the post, I'm going to retire that brush for now. So I've wet it, I'm drying it, I'm going to twirl it so I can get a nice point on that brush again because I'm going to use that point later and I'm going to use the smallest brush now to give myself some detail. I need to load black onto that brush and I'm going to have the sun shining from this direction. So if the sun is shining coming in from the left hand side then that would mean that I have a shadow underneath each of the signs and a shadow on the right hand side of the post because the sun is coming in from the left. So with the black I'm going to give myself a shadow on the right hand side of the post. So underneath each of the signs here's a shadow on the post and then on the right hand side of the post there's a shadow from the sun. I'm going to do that for all of my signs going up like that. And then across the top of the post like so. 
So I have a shadow now on the right hand side of that post. And because I have a shadow on the right hand side of that post, I'm going to wash the brush off, dry it nicely so I don't have any black on it, load it with some white, and put some highlight. Load it with some white. Make sure I have no excess water on there. Load some white on that brush and then put some highlight on the right hand side of my post. Like that. And as I said, being wood, it doesn't have to be a perfect line going down. This wood has got nooks and crannies and edges and so it just looks like if you have a look at it closely, it's a bit wobbly. It looks perfect, it looks like a post. And to continue the shadow that's coming in from the left hand side of the canvas, because my son is there, I'm going to put some shadow on the bottom of each of these signs. So for that, I'm going to wash the brush off and the brown that we used for the post, I'm going to load my brush off with that brown that we used for this post. And because I have shadow coming in from this side, it means that I'm going to put shadow on the bottom edge of that sign there and across there. Shadow on the bottom edge of this sign and across there. And this also has shadow at the back. On this one, I have shadow across the bottom. And there again. Shadow there, there, and across the back. Nice and simple. So my posts have a bit of shadow there. And correspondingly, they have also got a highlight from where the sun shines. So I'm washing that brush off, that smallest brush. I'm going to load it up with some white and I have highlights around the edge of these signs. So I'm going to put some white across the top edge of the sign like that, across the top edge of that sign and there, it's where the sun's hitting that sign. Because it's wood, you can see there's a bit of a wobble. I don't mind if there's a bit of a wobble because that makes an interesting piece of wood. It looks like it's hewn from an old boat from somewhere. There we go. So I now have my highlight on the one side, my shadow on the other side. Hold that closer. And each of those signs looks like an interesting piece of wood. I also have a shadow on the sand of that pole. Where the beach is, the color of the beach, which is what I have here, that's the color of the beach. I'm now going to add just a touch more red in that. Bit of red into that and I'm going to put a shadow of the beach of this pole onto the beach. My beach is a little wobbly, it's got some footprints on it. It's sand, it's not straight. So I'm going to take that colour from the bottom edge of the pole and wiggle it like that. So it's a slightly lighter colour, a slightly darker colour than the sand itself. I've taken from the bottom of the pole and I've given myself a shadow of that pole coming off the edge of the canvas. Right, when you've finished with that, we're going to move on and give ourselves a little bit of, I'm waiting for this, the, the sky to dry completely so that I can add in my seagull. But while I'm waiting for that to dry, let's add some detail into the sea. For that, I'm going to take this big round brush again because I need to have quite a lot of foam showing. That brush now 
is primed and ready with a nice point, I'm going to load plain white onto that brush. To give ourselves some foam, this lighter colour that we painted in here, which is the water on the beach, let's edge that with a bit of sea foam. So I'm taking the white and I'm going to almost scumble it, twist my brush where I've got the edge of lighter colour and put some white in there. And I'm going to do that all the way across where I had the lighter colour showing on the beach. Maybe a little bit more light behind there, since it is a rolling wave on the beach. I can load up some more white. And now where the, the sand joins the sea, there's another wave there. And you know, waves are never equal either. So this wave, I'm going to roll some white where those two colors meet, roll some more white in there. My wave's got different shape as well, so it's not one thick white line across. What you can see is that I'm using the width of this brush to load quite a lot of white on in areas and then wiggle it off to a thinner line. Load on some more white across there. So if you look closely, you can see that it's just using the brush, adding in some more thick and thin lines of white. I'm twisting the brush as I'm adding it in so I get some nice shapes because you don't really have full control over your brush when you twist it like that. And that gives you some nice foam at the edge of your sea. I'm going to go back now because these waves are rolling in and they're rolling in at different angles as well. If you watch the sea, you'll see they come in at different angles. I'm going to do another wave coming from around here. And that's rolling in a little bit further on this side and getting thinner here. Thicker on that side, getting thinner there. I've got another one that's coming in just behind that. So I'm going to put this wave from coming from a thin line there and I'm going to make it thicker. Going off to a thin line there. So I've got a little bit of a wave coming in there. That does have a tail building up to this nice big wave that's rolling over here. I'm going to put one a bit further back, maybe about there. As you go further back though, we are getting, the waves are getting closer and closer because it's a perception, a distance perception thing. So for here, the waves are getting closer to each other and shorter and choppier. As they come to the shore, they get longer, which is why I've done these beautiful long strips of waves here. This one is going to be rolling over a little bit here. So this one's just broken a little bit somewhere there. So I'm going to give a little, a little bit of a scumble. Add a little bit more of a wave there. Maybe a few little dots in between. And now these are getting further and further away. So now all I'm going to do for these ones, and they're not, they haven't met the beach yet. So they haven't started their roll. So for here, I'm just going to add in a few more interesting little highlights on the sea as we go further back with that same brush. And my highlights are not equal. They're not in a line. They're all over the place because as you go further, as, as the waves go further away from you and the wind is blowing, they're blowing at different angles. It's blowing different parts of the sea. So each of these little highlights isn't a long thin line all the way across, it's in different areas. It's like that. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. But I do know that the further away you go, the smaller they get until they become little dots in the distance. So they're just 
little dots at the back here where the sun is highlighting some of those waves. And I've got this wave turning over here. To emphasize that wave turning over there, it's going to have a little bit of shadow underneath. Remember the sun's coming from that side. So wash that brush off. I still have a nice mix of this turquoise, dark turquoise here. I'm going to take some of that dark, dark turquoise in the same brush. And I'm going to put some of that dark turquoise on the bottom of this wave there. To give it a little bit of a shadow as that wave turns around there. And underneath. I'm going to do the same for the underneath of this wave here. Because it's going to turn and it's got a bit of a shadow. Same here shadow on that side. As it's rolling in, we're going to lose that shadow. Take a little bit of that dark turquoise again. I'm going to put a little bit underneath that wave there. It's close enough to see. Maybe a little bit underneath this wave. Just a touch of shadow underneath the wave. Shadow's getting lighter as we go closer. I want a touch of that dark shadow underneath this wave, but not lots, because this wave now is breaking on the shore. So there we go. And we've got sand coming in. So there we go. Bit of shadow underneath there. And where we get to the sand here, the shadow is now on the sand. So we're going to change the color of that. A little bit more shadow under there. I'm going to take that turquoise, that dark turquoise, and paint a few ripples in the sea in the front here, and as we go further back. Not too many. There we go. I've got a few ripples in the sea. I have some shadow underneath this wave here. So this is going to be the beach. So if I wash that brush off, use some of my beach sand, which is here, I'm going to make it a touch darker with a bit of red. So it's the same color, almost the same color as we used for the shadow of the pole. And that I'm gonna add underneath this wave in the front here as it comes up onto the beach. A little bit of a shadow there. Let's make the beach interesting by putting a few dots of stones with that darker colour. So I'm using that brush and I'm just dotting a few stones onto the beach. They're going to be a touch darker as they go over this shadow there. There we go. My sand's got a little bit of interest in it now. I'm also going to wash that brush off, use that again to load some white on. So I've dried it. I'm going to load some white on that brush. And with plain white, I'm going to put some white dots on my beach because as there is sun shining on the waves, there's also sun shining on these stones. If you look at sand, it's got a little bit of a glimmer normally. So I'm putting a touch of those few little white dots on the sand there to give me a bit of a glitter on that sand. I think I want to add a little bit of a white in this wave here. Needs a little bit more white in there, I think. Like that. A 
Right, I'm ready to paint my seagull. My seagull has gray wings. So I'm going to take a touch of that black, put it into my mixing palette here, and add some white to give myself some gray, maybe a little bit more black. There we go, fairly dark gray. That's my seagull wings. Because I want some more control, I'm going to use my smallest brush. So use your smallest brush and take that gray. Seagull's going to be sitting on the top of the pole here. And I want my seagull facing off to the right hand side. So to do that, I'm going to have to paint this wing first. And this wing goes up at an angle like that. That's how my seagull is sitting. And I'm going to paint slight cup shape. There still was a bit of white from the clouds. I'm going to add a little bit more gray in there. So it's a very shallow cup shape. That is the wing of my seagull. Let's give it a little bit of a tail. Get to wash that brush off. Load white only. The bottom of the seagull, it's going to be, it's got a bit of a fat tummy and it's in white. So I'm going to paint the fat tummy underneath this cup. From there, the fat tummy of the seagull, and a blob for its head across the top here. Now, you can't see that in my clouds. So because I've put my seagull into the clouds and it's a fairly white area, I don't want it as white as that. I'm going to load my brush up with a little bit of the blue that I made for the sky. And in this area here, I'm going to color in a little bit of blue back into that cloud area to make my seagull highlighted. So it is pale blue, but I've colored a little bit more pale blue around my seagull there. So that when I make my seagull white, you can see that it's white, it's not into the cloud area. Wash that brush off, use it again to put the seagull's head on. My seagull's head is just a little blob across the top of its body like that. And I want to use some of the orange that I used for the beach. And I mixed for the beach, make it a, a very good orange. So a good mix of red and yellow. If you spin your brush around the edge of your palette, you can get a tip on this brush. So you don't use too much paint and get yourself a tip on the small brush that you can use to create the beak. So the beak of this bird is in this area here. Very gently put the beak there. <laughs> Looks a bit more like a puffin. Okay, I have a seagull puffin. There we go, Get a bit of an orange beak. And my seagull also has an eye, so take, clean that brush off, wash that brush off, clean it off, take a little bit of black. I'm going to give my seagull a tiny touch of black. Give him an eye right there. 
and my seagull. Up close, looks like that. Maybe I'm going to make this one a little bit fatter. There he goes. So I have my sea cut across the top of my pole. All right. Now to continue this picture, I am waiting for all of this to dry. Once this is dry, let's put some signs on here. Now you can either write the signs in with a pen or paint them in with the thinnest brush. I'm going to paint them. So this is up to you. If you're going to be putting this somewhere inside the house, I'm going to be writing the signs here in that brown. The brown that I made, see this brown here that I made for the pole? I'm going to add a touch more black to that. So it's a slightly darker brown. Make sure I have a tip. So I'm going to twirl that brush until I have a tip. So it's very little. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually very little paint on that brush. So that I can use it as a pencil. And I want to put my signs on now. So I'm going to put this as the bath. So I'm going to write in bath. If you have some pens that can do this, by all means, use your pens. Toilet, this way. Make sure you give yourself enough space to write this out. Toilet, shower. And as you can see, I'm just using the very, very tip of my brush. I've added in a little bit more black into the brown to make it a darker color so it shows up a little bit better. And the bottom one, I'm going to write here towels. There we go. So that is my signpost on the beach. I can hang this in my hallway so that my children know exactly where they're meant to be going. And the only thing that's necessary left, or that's left for me to do now, is to sign it. I'm going to take some of the dark brown and I'm going to sign this down here. There we go. There's the picture. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Nice and easy water painting. And uh, you can see how easy it is to do sea, how easy it is to do the waves on the beach. And um, maybe next time you won't do a puffin. But <laughs> it's as close to a seagull as we're going to get for today. So otherwise, enjoy. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.